Okay, so in this video clip, I'm just going to very quickly set out how you can set up and execute some Python code in Google Colab. Colab's available in the browser. It's a really powerful Python notebook. Um, you can go to the welcome page here and have a look. I'm going to go start with a new notebook. And um, you can enter in code or even basic math and uh, execute that. And you can use it as sort of ready reckoner. So for instance, we could even put in five plus five here and execute, right? And it'll already produce something, right? So even for basic uh, uh, math, right, um, it's handy. And uh, it's in your browser, but you, you must have a Gmail account and a Google Drive uh, set up so that you can execute and save your projects. We can save our project to something so we could say basic math here. And that's then available uh, in, in our drive, right? So basic math. Now, um, if I go again, say Google Colab, right? Google Colab and hit OK, hit Enter and go in and let's take, let's go with the welcome to Google Collaboratory, right? Now you might note the basic math has already been saved and I can retrieve it. It's actually just sitting on, on my, uh, in my Google Drive. So if I want to go back and take a look at what I did, it's already there. Okay, so this idea that you can retrieve it very quickly and, uh, you know, build it again, continue with the work, uh, that's really nice and it's practical because it'll work with your phone. Um, but if I start from scratch, uh, I can say, okay, let's go to the welcome to Google Collaboratory. And a very nice feature of the Colab is it allows you to put in, if you like, a table of contents. So if you're getting started for the first time and you just want to run some code here, we could copy that code. And it's just some basic math. Look how many seconds are in a day. Um, and then I put it out. So if we run the first line of code, let's go Google Colab again, right? I will create a new Google Colab, right? And we open up a new Colab. So new, and then we'll connect to the server. So it'll just take a second to allocate some space in the server. And let's go control V. If I execute the first line of code, Python code, if I put a pound sign in there, it neutralizes. If I run that, the code will just execute. But if I want to output out how many seconds are in a day, well, 20, when we take the product of the tree, we get the number of seconds in a day, it's 86,000. Uh, 400, or I could go to a repository where maybe we have some interesting, if you're in the finance area, go to Vinegar Hill Finance, and I'll go to the Merton, Black Scholes Merton, and I have a snippet of code there that I can run. And the nice thing about the Colab is you can take existing repositories, whether from a GitHub or download from um, a page and we can, let's say, copy and run. In this instance, it's a, an options estimation. Now we'll put code in, control V. So we create a new cell and maybe want to label it and say, look, it's the Black Scholes model, right? Uh, 1973. So I'm leaving a little bit of text here and I'm also creating if we come over here, you'll notice I left something, a title in the table of contents. And if I come here and I just want to say intro, introduction to Python notebook, right? That's another note that we have here. And we can just paste in the code that I copied and I can execute. Now it's a big long formula. We won't go through it all. I've left a link to Yu Chen Amber Lu. That's where I originally extracted the code from. And it, uh, it's, it's all Python. We're taking importing in libraries. We're importing in pandas. 
and probably um and that's it right uh this numpy there for mathematical operations um norm log sqrt pi and exp okay so we don't have numpy that's not a problem let's just execute and then if we want the price uh, come to just want to get the output here we want to put in a call valuation and we have price here in the data frame we can output that out so that's quite practical and we can get moving very quickly with minimal fuss okay so uh, very practical um you can execute the code and um you can then report that the price as a, a data frame uh, using pandas. Um, and if you want to share the project with a colleague or a collaborator, um, you can restrict it or you can say, look, change to anyone with this link um, and then come up and copy. And then that link then could be put into another browser. So we could go into another browser um, and here we'll go again. It's uh, this is um, Microsoft Edge, so or Microsoft Explorer, um, and um, we'll be able to recover that project and then execute as well, right? So, but I would need uh, a, a Google account, another Google account set up, or the same Google account, but. Uh, another Google account set up um, in order for this to be able to use the, the, the collab, right? And of course, this is getting a bit of space on the server and it executes. There's no issues. We could remove the estimation here, execute this first cell and then execute uh, for price again. Right, and we get uh, values here. If we change to 110 or something, we'll output different values then for the pot and the call. Okay, so let's go price. And you can see we've adjusted here for the call. This would be European call and pot. Now, if we had a data project, um, we could go in and take code. So if, if, if for the sake of argument, if I go back to where I had initially started. Um, if we were doing a data project, we have machine learning, we have data science here, um, and all the usual libraries can be imported in in exactly the same way as if you had a Jupyter notebook. What really we're getting here is reproducible research. So you can, you know, set up a comment uh, using a text, write something. If you put a, the pound sign in and then BB, it becomes um, in your your table of contents. You have something, uh, and that's a very important um, and very very practical. Um, and um, that, if you want to then execute, in this case, we're going to load in or import in NumPy, Matplotlib for graphing. We're going to set up some random numbers, uh, 100 random numbers here. Um, and uh, we can execute and plot out our values, right? Um, again, if you want to share it, same as before. Um, and then you can paste that. And that can then be uh, given to a colleague who could work along with you on the same project. Also interesting, if we take a look here at the edit, we can look at the notebook settings. And if you want some additional speed, you get equivalent here to what would be typically an offer in a sound card and TPU even more powerful again. And this is for perhaps maybe larger machine learning projects where you have, where you require a lot of computational power. Uh, there is some access to these, I think for free uh, but the default is actually powerful enough. I think it's like uh, probably a gaming machine, even with without a hardware acceler accelerator in the background. Uh, some of the um, computer um, 
processing power is rationed here. So it's not entirely for free if you were to take it to, if you were trying to um, do uh, constant uh, computations, um, you may get a uh, demand to uh, pay something, but I've been using Google Colab every day for uh, close to a year now. And um, it, it's completely unimpeded. It runs beautifully. Uh, it runs as, almost as if the application was like um, a desktop application. And I, in, in, I've never felt underpowered in terms of processing power. In fact, uh, felt uh, if I had a relatively uh, old machine laptop and I use Colab, uh, Colab speeds up operations. And uh, it's just a very, so long as I have an internet connection um, and it's reasonable broadband, uh, Colab is an ideal solution. You can run R code here. You can also run C++ and I'll leave links, video links, links to videos that I've done before showing how to do that. Okay, so that's Colab.